Peru, as it is often referred, is still a theory to many people. The celestial body theorized in ancient texts, most notably among the Sumerians, is believed to be at least ten times Earth's dimension. The latest research on Kuiper Belt objects indicates that something is having a skewing effect on those objects that are located just beyond Neptune. And whatever it may be, it is closing in fast. Thanks to science, we know that the larger the celestial body, the bigger its gravity and consequently its ability to affect other smaller bodies around it. We've known of Jupiter's crucial role in protecting us from asteroids for quite some time. But the mysterious Nibiru could very well do the opposite. And some say there's good reason to believe it. Once it makes its theoretical journey back around the sun, it's going to bring with it more than just an amazing sight in the sky. Some say the mass extinction that took place 27 million years ago was caused by comets and other space debris that pummeled Earth and annihilated everything in its path. And we indeed have fossil evidence to suggest that this is what happened. Ancient Sumerian writings first documented the planet's supposed existence, as did other ancient civilizations. But our inability to firmly study it thus placed its existence into the conspiracy theory category. But the days of conspiracy theory may be coming to an end. Now a retired astrophysics professor from the University of Louisiana, Daniel Whitmire, is indicating that Nibiru has all but arrived to our neck of the woods, and that the destruction brought about by its gravitational influence will be known in the same manner that it was known every time it passed us by throughout the Earth's existence. Whitmire recently published his research in the monthly notices of the Royal Astronomical Society. Although he first theorized the Nibiru mass extinction connection back in 1985 in the journal Nature. Earlier this year we started seeing space anomalies manifesting any small group of objects which had been taken on a peculiar orbit. Only something ten times the size of the Earth, as theorized with Nibiru, could influence celestial objects in such a way, according to a study from Caltech University. The anomaly was discovered in the Kuiper Belt, which stretches all the way past Neptune. Whitmire's original theory suggested that Nibiru orbits the Sun, passing through the Kuiper Belt comets, picking up traces and carrying them onwards. The danger here was not only that some would hit Earth, but that others would disintegrate in the Sun, causing immense problems with the Earth's light source. Just as ancient civilizations were adept at watching the stars, their astute observations that described a mysterious heavenly body that traveled periodically through our solar system has garnered considerable attention and a great deal of controversy in the last 100 years. For decades, mainstream scientists denied the existence of Planet X, but now are changing their narrative since there is very strong evidence of its existence in our solar system. Even astronomers are acknowledging that a Neptune-sized planet is lurking beyond Pluto. As the mystery of Planet X continues to unfold, there have been numerous diversion tactics that have been thrown our way to confuse us and further erode the truth process. One of these is the announcement by NASA that an object known as 2016 WF9 is hurtling towards Earth. It may be a comet or it may be an asteroid about one half mile in diameter. But it is not a threat to the Earth for the foreseeable future, this according to NASA. But one Russian astronomer tells NASA not so fast. Dr. Damir Zakharovich insists that NASA is wrong in their trajectory and size of the mystery object. He believes that the object is coming from the rogue planet Nibiru, 
which he states is on the edge of our solar system. It is about a mile in diameter, and according to his own words, he states the following. The object they call WF9 left the Nibiru system in October, when Nibiru began spinning counterclockwise around the sun. Since then, NASA has known it will hit the Earth, but they are only telling people now, we are all in peril. Does this sound familiar to you? We have heard of impending cataclysms on numerous occasions. On one hand, you have a government space agency saying all is well, whereas a few astronomers and astrophysicists are now telling us all is not well. So therein lies the confusion on who to believe and what to believe. It just keeps getting crazier and more uncertain. It's a game of deception, but we should not fall prey to their rules of play. If we keep ourselves focused on what's really happening at this time here on our planet and throughout our solar system, then we will have a better perspective on what to expect and when to expect it. It's in the signs that are provided for us in our quest for truth and understanding. Like Dr. Daniel Whitmire and Demir Zakharovich, there are other astronomical investigators and researchers who believe that Planet X is responsible for catastrophic events that transpired both in the past and which will take place in our near future here on Earth. One of those individuals who has garnered much attention in the past few weeks is David Mead, a former forensic investigator who claims that Planet X is actually a star with seven planets and moons orbiting it, including planet Nibiru. He states there is overwhelming evidence which suggests that the alien star system will approach from the south, will pass to the north, and then loop back around. The gravitational pull of the passage will be devastating, as its effects are already being felt and known. According to me, the recent earthquakes and volcanoes around the dreaded Ring of Fire are down to the push and pull of the Planet X system. And if recent events of major earthquakes in such locations as Japan, Peru, New Zealand, Argentina, and Indonesia are any indication of what we may expect, then there may actually be some validity to his investigative research. Let's listen now to an interview that David Mead conducted in which he provides reasons for his belief that the Planet X system will soon arrive, how NASA is coordinating efforts to conceal its location, and how an artifact brought to public attention in 2002, known as the Sky Disk of Nebra, is of great importance in determining the probability of a major pole shift in our lifetime. Now, there's been a lot of Google and uh, NASA cover-up, in my opinion, on this. And I'll give you an example of it real quick that might sort of answer your question and, and also uh, even move us a little bit into a combination of astronomy and the Apocalypse, the book of Revelation, the last book of the Bible. So there's an object I call the Red Dragon Anomaly, which appears in the constellation Virgo. And it currently, very interestingly, mirrors the vision or biblical sign of Revelation chapter 12. Now, this is a critical, major sign. Of course, Revelation is from the highest authority, Revelation 1. John wrote it on the Isle of Patmos about 2,000 years ago. And in it, he found out that cosmologically the sun travels the ecliptic and every September it passes through the constellation Virgo. The moon also travels close by. Now, towards the end of September in 2017 next year, there is a precise configuration of the Revelation 12 imagery. And I've used Stellarium and I've gone back 6,000 years and I've gone forward 1,000 years. And it's complex and involves a simultaneous interface of half a dozen astronomical variables, but it only occurs once and that's in September of 2017. But in addition to the Revelation 12 sign as it's known, the imagery of the dragon at the feet of Virgo with the sun at the head and the moon at the feet presents itself right now very interestingly in Starry Night in real time. 
Now, this is highly unusual and extraordinary. The red dragon of Revelation 12 may well be, and I believe rather obviously is, planet X, as it's referred to in an earlier chapter of Revelation, I think Revelation chapter 8, in a similar manner. A colleague of mine at the university, uh, one university in the western U.S., brought up a very interesting point, perhaps a cover-up to my intention. Here it is. Basically, he said, the areas of the dragon anomaly have been covered or patched up by Google Sky in the past. But one of the ways to actually see what is behind this patched out area is to use a program called Skyview by NASA. Skyview, what that is, it's a virtual observatory on the net. It generates images of any part of the sky from wavelengths of all regimes, radio to gamma. You just filter it. Now, when you view these images in various filters, you can see the actual color of this anomaly in Virgo is red and it does look very menacing as it appears to have a face like a dragon with two profound eyes. It's very intriguing and quite strange. Now just for your listeners I'll provide very briefly the right ascension and declination if they want to go to Skyview and here it is just cut and paste this coordinate. Here's the right ascension 13 hours 50 minutes 44 seconds here's the declination and that would be minus eight hours, fifth, rather 13 minutes and 59.7 seconds. So right ascension is the celestial equivalent of longitude and uh, in the sky latitude is called declination. So you just enter those coordinates and then on sky view you just choose the iris 100 micron telescope setting and there you are. You've never seen an object quite like this one. Now the sign itself might be a sweeping parenthetic of that entire Biblical 70th week of Daniel, which is a key to solving the most complex cryptogram in existence, the book of the apocalypse, as to what it is the astronomical scientific community, I think is keeping a very low profile. And the question is, why did they ever cover it up to begin with? The, the main item we have historically in terms of archaeology to help us relate on a scientific basis to a prior pole shift by the Earth is something called the Nebra Sky Disk. Now this is a 12 inch bronze disk, the Nebra Sky Disk. It may be the key to determining the last recorded time in history that Planet X actually flew by the Earth. The disk is bronze, it's inlaid with gold. Uh, it was found near Europe's oldest observatory in Gossic, Gossic, Germany. Now the story of the disk is quite unconventional. It was found I think in 99, 1999 by German treasure hunters and they were using metal detectors inside an ancient forest. However, German law dictates that all such relics are state property. So instead of turning it in, they attempted to sell it on the international market a couple of years later in 2002. Now working for the Swiss government, an archaeologist named Harold Meller, I believe, posed as a straw buyer. The disc was seized by authorities and then it was analyzed. Now what it contains, it contains symbols including the sun, the moon, the constellations I think of Pleiades, Capricorn, Perius, and Gemini. Now the disk reflects the sun in the position of a solar eclipse. What is causing the eclipse? Well it's not the moon which is on the opposite side of where it should be located. So I think the best deductive logic is that an unknown near earth object is causing the eclipse. Now this 32 centimeter disk weighs about 2 kilograms. Again, it's decorated with gold leaf symbols, and the gold leaf symbols also reflect four planets, Venus, Mars, uh, I believe Jupiter, and Mercury. Now, using modern-day astronomical software, you can plot the actual day and hour the disk was produced, and the result is very precise. It was produced at April 6, 1810 BCE at 8.30 a.m. The disk was thus created during the Bronze Age, which is 3,800, I think, 26 years ago. Now, there's a curve bar at the bottom of the riverbank, the Saul River, which still currently exists. Much of the disk's current coloration is green due to a tarnishing effect. And the discovery site is a prehistoric enclosure in the Ziegel Roads Forest, known by the name of Middleburg or Central Hill, uh, 60 kilometers, and I believe, west of Lipsig. Now, the treasure hunters stated it was found within a pit in the forest near the ancient Gothic Observatory. Now here's something extremely interesting. A very 
upon examination, the disk reflects the constellation Orion at the very bottom. Orion should not have been observable from that location in Germany at that time. The nearest location, in fact, from which Orion, the constellation Orion, could have been observed is Luxor, Egypt. That adds to the mystery. The only logical conclusion is that this 26 to 30 degree difference is accounted for by a simultaneous pole shift. So this mystery shrouded sky disk of Nebra is an advanced astronomical clock. It's a compendium of knowledge. And I think it gives us the best proof of the existence and passage of Planet X in the ancient world. So the purpose of the sky disk is really no longer a matter of speculation. I believe, and others believe, it's the oldest visual representation of the sky in existence. And it postulates and proves the approach of a near-Earth object causing the daytime eclipse, as well as causing a major pole shift that has just occurred, and that was 3,826 years ago. Mead goes on to refer to Father Malachi Martin, who knew of the existence of the Lucifer Telescope in Arizona and what its purpose was intended to represent, to observe the heavens and the approach of the planet X. Father Malachi Martin, I remember an interview with him back uh, some years ago. I found out about it later, but he interviewed, I think, with Art Bell or some radio show in 1997, and he said, we're looking for an object. We, the Vatican, now he was a Vatican insider. He's an ex-Jesuit. He was a Jesuit. And he said, we're looking for an object that's approaching from space. The, the Catholic Church is, the Vatican is, and we think it's going to approach in about 20 years. Now, that was in 1997, which is 19 years ago. So. Uh, he basically, I believe he was a professor of paleontology at the Pontifical Biblical Institute of the Vatican, and he criticized the Vatican for not releasing the full content of the third secret of Fatima, and the presumption was the Vatican didn't want the facts known about Wormwood. Well, in any case, it just seems highly suspicious that they've invested, you know, all of this money there to, uh, why are they in the strange business of astronomy? Uh, why do they have this uh, large binocular telescope on Mount Graham? It's a near-infrared telescope. Now, the cover story is, of course, they're looking for extrasolar planets and alien intelligence. But uh, they have an infrared telescope. They have to supercool it to minus 351 Fahrenheit to allow it to conduct observations. And, of course, a, a dwarf star, whether it's you know, a red dwarf or a brown dwarf, and the only difference is the size in those. Brown dwarf never reached fusion stage. It didn't convert hydrogen to helium. Uh, a, a red dwarf is anywhere from 0.8% to half the size of our sun. Anything less than 8% of the size of our sun is classified as a brown dwarf. So it's one of the two. But the way to observe those is in the infrared spectrum. Uh, they do have red halos around them. But uh, to uh, determine the heat signature, you need an infrared uh, telescope. So that's what you've got. And... Um, Anyway, I think another Vatican insider stated that the Graham Observatory is used to study anomalous celestial bodies approaching the Earth. And uh, I think he, in an interview with him, he compared it to what the CIA did with one of its secret eyes known as the twin to Hubble, Scott Keyhole 12, Keyhole 12. You may have heard of, of that program. But in any case, the Vatican is set up like a government. It has its own secret intelligence agency. It's called the SIV. And uh, the English translation is the Information Service of the Vatican. And the uh, LBT, their Lucifer Telescope, is uh, two giant 28-foot diameter telescope mirrors. And it's cooled, super cooled, in order to observe near-infrared wavelength range. So the question is, you know, what do you think they're looking for? These are the observations from individuals of different backgrounds an astrophysics professor, a Russian astronomer, a Planet X researcher and investigator, and a Jesuit priest, all with first-hand experience and a foreknowledge of a planetary system that, that has visited us in our past and will once again be seen in the heavens. You can hear David Mead's full interview by visiting our media website shown here under the category of Featured Podcasts.